welcome friends to this holiday party for the holiday season of 2017 very happy to welcome you all today is not a day for me to speak but to have fun on a holiday to hear you sing and dance and whatever you want to do on a holiday so don't expect too long a speech from me i can only say from my understanding of the spiritual path as taught by my master adur maharaj baba kaul singh ji that we came into this world to have a holiday we did not come to suffer we did not come to make any part of this universe as our own we did not come to build houses for ourselves to buy cars for ourselves to buy clothes and other possessions for ourselves we came just to be here for a short while to have a holiday a new experience a high quality roller coaster experience with highs and lows so we enjoy the adventure and go back home that was the very purpose of coming into this universe when we came here we forgot what we came for we forgot this is not a reality we created it just for a holiday we forgot this is just our creation for ourselves and not that we have come into somebody else's world and now we have to live there we change the whole context of our appearance in this universe we came from our true home where we were all one and many at the same time because there was no time and space to divide us you are one totality of consciousness and just because we had some essential nature in that one totality the essential nature was we were all knowing without a mind we were all knowing intuitively we knew everything intuitively there was nothing left outside we were all love just love nothing else we were all beauty appreciation of beauty we were all bliss that was our totality that was our nature but this was a nature not an experience of nature we wanted to make our nature into an experience the one became into the many just to make our nature into an experience love is love but when there is more than one it makes a lover and a beloved you can't make love an experience if there is only one so it is love but you can make it an experience with the many the one totality became many souls within the one not anywhere outside there is no outside there is no space and time within that one the one became the many and to enjoy the great joy of love beauty bliss everlasting peace everlasting joy this was our state we wanted to add on some more adventure so we got a little equipment very nice very sharp well designed computer called the human mind and we gave life to that computer and gave power to that computer so it can work so we can have a great time using that wonderful machine we use that machine to create space and time to create past present and future to create here and there it is a great job the mind did a great job and we enjoyed the vastness that was created just by the use of the mind the vastness of space the vastness of time infinite time infinite space was created just by one little computer we added to ourselves and gave power to it our mind when space and time were created we wanted to make it even more interesting and therefore we placed experiences on them which we call events events were placed on a space time created by the mind and we just like the totality of one soul became the many one mind that made all this arrangement became the many and the many souls got many minds one attached to each so we could experience this grand grand drama that we were creating for our own entertainment and for our holiday when we were set up we wanted to link those events 
with each other and we linked them with a beautiful arrangement called cause and effect. So we could explain every event from its cause and could explain why an effect takes place when there is a cause. A cause and effect became a beautiful way to create a linkage and a continuity in those events that we created. Beautiful. That great adventure that we created by putting events and connecting them is today called the law of karma. Karma means you can now participate in those events and your personal participation makes an event good or bad. They were not good or bad to start with, but the mind said you can have a better enjoyment if you increase the range in which you can enjoy those things. Some are very good, some very bad. Some moderately good, moderately bad. And we participated. The original totality of consciousness, the self, our self, our total self, became the self in each soul became the self with each mind and that self got a participation in the events and could take participation in the creating of the cause and bearing the effect. We participated through our mind which was then given the great gift of being able to think and thinking was introduced as the lifeline of the mind. The mind could function with thinking and as it thought and rationalized and put thoughts together, it also associated with those thoughts with what was happening outside of ourselves. So all happenings that were being created in an artificially created space and time, we were using to have a greater thrill and greater good time. As we delegated more of our intelligence, our ability to create to another level, where we separated the sense perceptions one from the other, so that the events can be seen in many ways. Seen, touched, tasted, heard, all different things. So we enjoyed it even more. That we could now have those events. So look at the holidays arrangement we have made. Nobody could have made a better arrangement for a holiday to come into that kind of experience. And we arranged it all. And when we came to the final stage, to make it a solid reality, not only an experiential reality, a solid reality, we introduce something called matter, something called physical atoms and molecules, and cover this all up in a form in which the core self still is in the center, surrounded by the equipment that we use, the mind, and surrounded by the sense perceptions, surrounded by a physical body, very well compact piece to have a holiday in a created universe. A beautiful arrangement. Something went wrong. If it hadn't gone wrong, I wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> we would all be enjoying this world, ups and downs of it that we created, and one day we would go back home, it is temporary. We go to a carnival, and there are so many rides. Sometimes we have to ride and fall from a distance, and some of these rides are dangerous, but we love them because we were great risk takers to start with. Why were we risk takers? Because we had no fear. The soul has no fear ever. But to have an experience of fearlessness, we have to have opposite experience of fear to know what fearlessness is. What is our true state of fearlessness? To be able to see fear and then say, oh, we are not fear, we are not afraid. We have to see fear somewhere in order to feel we are fearless. So we put the fear in the computer, in the mind, not in the soul. The fear was all built into the mind. And then we could see if we were soul, we are fearless. If we are mind, we are afraid. We had a great experience. In fact, we use this principle in all our experiences that every experience we have should be generated for us by an opposite of it. So we created a world of duality. Pairs of opposites. Everything became pairs of opposites. That you couldn't have happiness if you never saw unhappiness. You could not see light if there was no darkness. You could not see our truth if there was no falsehood. Everything was placed into pairs of opposites, both physical 
and as well as intangible things. Everything was based on pairs of opposites in a world of duality. We liked it, that we could see much more. And then we were able to create a reality outside of our own reality of the self, thereby creating an unreal reality to compare with the real reality. This was wonderful. And to make the experiences of our holiday as intense as possible, we generated a special method of locking up some of our own truth about ourselves by putting our attention created by the mind, the human attention created by the mind made it possible to lock ourselves inside ourselves. So that only the final garment we are wearing, the final costume we are wearing should be our reality so we can enjoy it. If the inner garment is reality, the outer dream life, not real. But we want real experience, not, not a daydream, we want real dream, a real successful thing not something that's artificial. So we made every level of experience with every garment we added on to ourselves, including the mind, the senses, and the physical body. We made each one an independent reality. Every level of conscious experience was made into a different reality. And to sustain the reality, we came into each reality locking all other realities out. Did not matter which reality we were in. We were in a total reality, we locked it out. We were in a mental reality, we locked it out. We were in a sensory reality, sense perceptions were all intact, no matter, we locked it out. We came into this physical world where I'm sharing this experience with you and sharing the true story of our holiday. And here we are thinking this is the only reality. It's a great experience. This is the only reality. All else is somewhere we don't know. All else is locked out. The reality we know is here. And here it looks. The many are real. The world is real. The objects are real. Everything is real. Time is real. Space is real. Everything around us is real. What a beautiful way to, to construct and generate reality. We did a great job. I think it's the best job that consciousness would have done to generate this reality in which we live now. It's wonderful. But then something else started happening based on the equipment we carried. It had super sharp AI, artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence was so super duper good in the mind. That was the computer of ours that it began to give advice to us instead of functioning as a plaything for us. It was a gadget, we were supposed to play with it. We are supposed to use our mind to think the way we want. We could use our mind to do anything we want. But we began to think it is a very wise artificial intelligence. We should listen to this high intelligence and work according to the mind. When we began to listen to the mind, we forgot it's a machine. We work with the mind as if the mind is ourself. We began to listen to the mind to such an extent that we thought it is our self. Forgot the self is using the mind. The, the self was hidden behind the mind. And the mind began to go out and enjoy things and enjoy a little too much. What happened by enjoying a little too much? Got attached to those things. Got desires to have more of those things desires to make those things our own. Desire and attachment became so important for the functioning of our mind that the desire and attachment made us feel this is the only place to be in. There were highs and lows which were built into the system. The whole system was built as a roller coaster that we should have highs and lows. But we began to feel we only want the highs, we don't want the lows. And we began to design many methods of improving our own life. We began to say, if we do good deeds, maybe we'll get good results. Mind said, no, 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 no. Those are good deeds are not very pleasurable. The bad deeds taste much better. <laughs> and as the mind got more power from us, ultimately we became slaves of the mind. And equipment given to us 
to enjoy, which had the capacity to create so many varieties of experiences, was now being used by us to advise us and to lead our lives. What a strange situation. And what has happened? Because of the situation, the whole intention of coming for a holiday, for coming into something to entertain and enjoy, became a place of suffering, as if it's a trap we are caught in. That's our situation. Today I, re I am revealing to you the very basis for which we came. We never came for what is happening here. It's artificial. Our suffering is artificial. Our thinking this is the only place we are in is artificial. It's incorrect. We see people living in their bodies and leaving their bodies. Everybody dying. We see people die and we feel we may not die. How can that be? We make plans as if this is a permanent place for us to be in. This is not at all permanent for anybody. And what are we trying to do? Knowing it's a temporary place. Knowing the extent of the time and space we have created. Infinite. We can talk billions of light years away. Billions of light years ahead. Infinite space around us. And yet, in the short period we are here, we are trying to say, this is my house. What will happen in a few years? You're, you are gone, house is left behind. This is my cat, my dog, my wife, my children. Everything around us, we are trying to make it mine. And nothing is mine. Nobody has ever taken anything from here when the body is left here. Yet, in the body, we are trying to make everything our own, as if the body will possess it forever. What a big blunder. Biggest blunder to get into this trap of desiring, attaching, and trying to make it mine. Nothing is mine. Never was, never will be. Yet, we got into this trap that we are trying to make things ours, which is never really ours. What happens as a result? This show was supposed to be a single visit to our fairy land that we created, the amusement park we created, and go back home. We get so attached to these things, and when we leave the body, those things don't go with us. And we say, no, we want those things, and come back again and again. The attachments are bringing us back again and again. We came for a short time to have a good time, a good holiday, and we are trapped because of our desires and attachments to come here again and again and stay here for long. Unfortunate that this thing that was temporary for a holiday should have become a prison house for us, a prison in which we perpetuate our living by our own attachments to things that will never be our own. So it's an amazing story of a human being caught up like that and knowing very well Nobody will take it with us. We will all die. Nobody has ever lived forever. No master has lived forever. Great enlightened people have come, all died. How can we then think that we will be living here forever and making things our own? Somebody goes to an amusement park and likes a ride and says, I'll take these chairs, I'll take these Ferris wheels, I'll take them with me, they are mine. Nobody does that. That's what we were supposed to be here for, to enjoy what is around or temporarily, and go back home. Unfortunately, we got trapped here. What happened to our super intelligence? What happened to our wisdom with which we came here, which is still intact and is now caught up in something we think is the only reality? Is there no way out? There is a way out. And that's what I've come to share with you. That when we are in the holiday and we forget it was a holiday, we make it a place of real life of pain and misery. Pain and misery we create even when there is no pain and misery. We become miserable. I met a man who has millions of dollars. He says he's poor. Why is he poor? Because the neighbor has more. It's true. We have even judged our own state of happiness, our state of joy, our state of enjoyment, based on what others are having around us. Have we transferred our happiness to our neighbors now? That's what it looks like. So we are all creating unhappiness in areas where there should be no unhappiness at all. 
So we are making a place which was meant for a holiday into a place of unnecessary suffering. But when we suffer so much, some wisdom does come to us based upon our original state. When the original state strikes in us, suddenly a thought comes to us. Why are we taking this so seriously? This is not our place. It couldn't be. That feeling comes in inside. This is not our place. Then we should be looking for something that is our own. And a strange kind of a seeking starts coming. A seeking, this is not my place. I want to find out where is my home, where I came from, what my origin, who am I? These questions come up. When these questions come up in us, it's a good time to watch out. And those questions make us a seeker of our true home and our true state of being. It's an arrangement that we have ourselves made that when we are tired of this experience, we should be able to go back to our true home. And the arrangement is at that time when we get fully tired and are ready to go back home, these thoughts begin to come into our head. Who am I? Why am I here? I am not the body. Bodies are dying. Am I not more than that? What could I be? Can I find out? That seeking inside that starts. When seeking starts, the game for going back home has begun. After the seeking is started, we come across people who say, this is not real. This is temporary. There's something more real inside you. What is more real? That you have an identity that is not the physical system. That identity is that you can still do whatever you are doing without matter, without, space, without these molecules and atoms that are constituting your physical body and the physical world. How do you think the world is physical? Because you have a physical body. Did you know if you didn't have a physical body, the world would not look physical at all? If you have a different body, the world becomes like that. It is the nature of our own costumes we are wearing on our consciousness that generates what kind of world it looks like. So when we can leave one costume, we automatically see another world. Other worlds are so well designed, so well created by us, so well created, so that if we leave this body, we can go into a state of being where our sense perceptions are intact and an overlap of another world and this world can be experienced. We can see this world and see the other world, bigger than this, both at the same time. If we want to leave that state and go to the other world, we can drop the overlap and go into that other world where it's completely different laws operating and much better than the ones we are experiencing here. Karma is still there. Cause and effect is still there. Space and time is still there, but it's not the same way like here. We have greater mobility, we have greater ability to see, we have greater ability to understand, the mind functions more clearly in that state than it does here. So all those advantages are there in that state. So we can enjoy that state and many people think that good we have come back home. But it's not home. Karma is still there, space time is still there. We have the opportunity then to go further up and go and discover the state where we, as our souls, took up a mind and made it part of ourselves by giving it power of life. And the mind is functioning and we see the great job the mind is doing, like creating different series of events to be placed into our life in the physical plane, in the astral plane. The mind is generating series of events, infinite events, and packed into little, little capsules called destinies. All destinies are being made there. Nothing is made higher than that. And we can see how we are participating in the making of our destinies. And how we are participating in picking up destinies which we want to enjoy. It's like saying, I like this DVD better than the other. I'll try this one. And that creates our life here. Next time, I like this one better. Okay, I'll do. That becomes our life here all being generated at the causal level. It's a great experience. And many people think that's where we came from. That's our true home. But it's not. 
still in space and time. That's where space and time are being created. Therefore, we find that if we are seekers of a true home, not seekers of the creation of destinies, not seekers of a universal mind, but searching for the soul, searching for life itself, searching for where consciousness is born, searching for ultimate truth, then we go beyond that. And when we are ready for that, right in this physical body, a human being appears at that right time and guides us how to go within to that body. We fall in love with that person. When we fall in love with somebody, that person drags us. We can't go anywhere. If you love somebody, you go where that person goes. So when we fall in love with such a person who is carrying the awareness of our true home while he's here, and we follow him out of love, we go to the true home. As simple as that. There's no other place to go to if you love somebody. And that person pulls us by his unconditional love. A love that never changes, a love that never judges, a love that never says you are good or bad, a love that says you are going back with me, you are my friend, and you go back home. It's an amazing arrangement. And that being can take you up to the point beyond the mind, before any of this stuff was created, where you were a soul. And that's a great thing to happen, and the best liberation one can get to discover what is a soul. The greatest discovery. We call such people perfect living masters who can discover our soul for us. And we discover they are a beautiful soul. We are beautiful soul. Our relationship is soul to soul. And that is how we got pulled up beyond the mind. But there are some super duper perfect living masters also. I'm using this word super duper but I used it in a meeting earlier today. So forgive me for repetition. There are perfect living masters who take us even beyond. But those are masters who come not for taking us to our true reality. We discover we are a soul. But for those, they come for those who want to discover the ultimate truth. Not the ultimate reality. Ultimate reality is we are souls. Immortal. Forever. One in the many. One in the reality. But there are many souls. Those perfect living masters who come to us when we are searching for the ultimate truth, not the ultimate reality. The ultimate truth is there is only one. They take us even beyond the level of the soul. They take us where souls are born. The primordial souls come where the original things happen. And these words I'm using just because we can't understand that the word original does not fit in there. Because there's no time there, no space there. But I have to use these words. There's no other way to make, make even sense of it. But the truth is that they take us back to where the origin of the whole show took place. Imagine we come on a holiday celebration here. And we think we come just for a little holiday, singing, music, dance, enjoying. And yet we have an advantage at this time to make a true holiday by enjoying and going back to our true home. It's possible right here. It's possible. Only thing required. Seek inside yourself. Seek inside that human being who is going to be a projection of your own self. The seeker is being projected outside as a human being will appear in your life. Automatically. No search is needed. Search cannot make you find that such person. You can search as much as you like. You can never find a perfect living master. Because perfect living masters do not display any sign that they are perfect living masters. They don't wear any special costume. They don't wear any orange colored or saffron colored or white colored or black colored or any kind of colored dress to show we are different from others. They are not different from us. They are totally like us. They are more like us than we are ourselves like us. They are more ordinary human beings than we are ordinary human beings. So how can we ever find them? There is no way we can find them. Those who are perfect living masters of the highest order to the ultimate truth, they come exactly like we are. There is no need for them to tell us who they are. We discover from inside our own self. We don't have to discover from outside. 
their relationship is with inside us. They are inside us and outside. Are they different? Somebody has asked me an email question this morning. Is there a difference in the outside master and the inside master? Why the question came up? Inside master seems to understand my question and answer. Outside master knows nothing. And good, good distinction. The outside master knows nothing. Inside master knows everything. How can they be the same? The answer to that is they are the same. But the outside master is ordinary human being like us who knows nothing. We know nothing. He knows nothing. If we know something, he knows something. If he knows more, he knows more. He is our mirror. The outside master. He knows as much as we know as human beings. Not more, not less. But the inside one knows everything. So therefore, it's a same being. But the question is how we get information, outside information, like the one we need outside. Inside information, the one we need inside. So that is why these roles are being performed by the same self. The same self starts the whole game. The same self realizes the truth ultimately. That's the greatest possible thing. I don't think when we describe miracles, I don't think I can describe the biggest miracle than the miracle that being in a human being or body in a physical universe, that the ability for a human being to find the ultimate truth while it is here. I can't think of a bigger miracle than that. And the certainty of this miracle happening, if you meet such a person, that makes meeting that certain person and get a miracle also. And if you meet such a person, that's guaranteed that you will get that ultimate truth is itself a greatest miracle. It's a very rare event. It's not common. I know because most people are not seeking the ultimate truth. Most people are seeking some little comfort, some little advantages in the state they are in here. They want to get a little better money, the better job, better house, better accommodation, a new car. They want the children to be better behaved. They want families to be happier. They want peace of mind. They want a little comfort in the current state of being. And there are thousands of teachers who can do that. They can help. Their counselors are there. There are people who talk. Coach, coaches are there. They help you. So many people are there. Maybe billions of teachers are there in this world who can take us and help us in those areas. But then there are others who say, no, this body is not my real self. I want to find what is inside. I want out-of-body experience. There are hundreds of people who can teach you that also. There are so many yogis existing all over the world teaching you yogi by which you can have an out-of-body experience. You can have great experiences by placing attention on the energy centers in the body. And they are very interesting. There are many who try drugs for that. Aya Hauska is becoming popular. I hope I am pronouncing correctly. People come and tell me their experiences. They tell me what's happening with the different drugs. I used to hear experiences in the 60s when I was in Cambridge at the Harvard University. Professors were trying those drugs. They're still trying now. More people are trying and getting different experiences. That's a minor thing. Nothing to do with real truth to find out who we are. None of them give you any inkling of who you really are. None of them touch the soul. None of them can even give you an inkling of what the soul is like. Therefore, those are many teachers. But those who want to go to the universal source of creation, which they consider is the universal mind, there are few teachers like that. Maybe a few hundred in the universe. Those who want to take you beyond the mind and realize the importance of love and devotion, they're a handful of people. And those who can take you to the top to the ultimate truth of the oneness of creative power, the one totality of consciousness. There are so few that the great master used to say they can be counted on the finger of the two hands. Like he put a limit at eight at any good time. He said sometimes they're even less than that. Why? The seekers of that ultimate truth are so few. The seekers of intermediate truth are many. But it's a great thing. It's a great miracle that we can talk about these things and understand the reality of this universe, how the whole life was supposed to be a holiday and we have the ability now to go back to our true home. I hope you enjoy this holiday here and don't forget to go back to your true home. 
take this message from here today that this is supposed to be holiday. Its ups and downs are part of the created holiday. And they are not going to go with us. Neither the ups nor the downs. Nor riches nor poverty. Nor the body nor its illness nor its health. Nothing is going to go with us. We are not this. It's just created for our life for this show. So we'll up to this go back home. And in these in this sense, I wish you the best of holiday and the best of your return to your true home. ASAP. <laughs> I learned these words from my emails. <laughs> they write to me, we want radiant form ASAP. We want to reach our true home ASAP. So I also learned ASAP. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Whatever it means, it means something in time. Now, I want to just mention one thing. Please remember, we say we are trapped here. What is the trap? If we just go to the basic, it's all right to say our attachments, our desires. Supposing we don't have desire. No attachment, no desire. We are living in a spiritual state of mind and not attaching ourselves. We are de detached, living a very spiritual life. And we are, what is the trap? There is a very sinister trap. A trap we don't even see. It's called the trap of time. Time is the trap. Nobody notices it. We are taking it for granted. Our mind cannot think outside of it. The mind cannot function outside of it. Therefore, it's such a sinister trap that we feel time is inevitable. Even when we discuss spiritual things, we say, yes, once we go up there, once we go up there, when we came down, when did this happen? We are putting time in our true home also. We can't get rid of the idea of time. Time, Indian word for that is Kaal. Kaal means time. This time is a trap. People say Kaal is a negative power. Time is a negative power. And it has taken hold of all of us. ASAP is all under the control of Kaal. Kaal determines when it's ASAP. Kaal determines when things will happen. Kaal determines we are impatient seekers. And impatience doesn't work because of God, because of time. Therefore, we should remember that the real trap is something that we don't even notice. We take it for granted. And when we get out of it, then only we realize how important this factor was in creating the prison for us. They were supposing time is pulled out today. We'll all be in our true home. So what is keeping us here? Time. So that is why, remember, time is a negative factor. And when you remember that, you will also get more patience in dealing with everything here. So that is why they say, acceptance and patience are necessary in the spiritual path. Acceptance because you have to accept what has been designed as a destiny. It is designed with ups and downs for a lot of us. And we have to accept it. If you don't accept it, you fight against something that will not change. So it's just wasting your time, your energy, and your patience by trying to fight something. Accept and patience. So when you have patience, it should be patience also for any development taking place out of your seeking. So that is why don't be in a rush. When destinies are made, the events are placed in time because we are sitting in time and space. So that is why when destinies are made, we have added the position that we will take when we are seekers and get out. It's already determined. So patiently take your time. Enjoy. Enjoy the time from now to the time that you will go back home. So don't be anxious. Leave anxiety here. It only belongs to the mind, not to the soul. Karma belongs to the mind, not to the soul. Soul has no karma. Mind is creating karma. Mind is creating all this. And in the light of this, some people have asked me a simple question. If destiny is already made and a karma is already set and all events of our life are already set what will happen, then why are we supposed to struggle to do anything? And they forget that the struggle is also set. They forget that part. They say if 
if everything is going to happen according to time, why should I try to hurry? Because trying to hurry is also sad. People forget that the way we make our choices is part of karma, not merely the events outside. How our thoughts take place, how we make choices, how we question things is all part of the destiny. Destiny is a full package. It is not just containing some events and now you can comment upon it and get out of it. Somebody says, my destiny is to go left, I will go right. Well, it was destined to, for you to say, if destiny is left, I will go right. It's part of destiny to say that. Everything is destined, including the way we think about things. So that is why, if you feel that you have some understanding of this, say, I accept it. That will be your destiny. It was destined that you will say, I accept it. But better, if you feel that you have a right to say something, if you feel you have the free will to make the decision, make a good one. Make a good one. Okay, I accept. I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to have a holiday. If the free will is functioning, you do it. Later on, you will find that what you thought was free will, it, you acted exactly according to the destiny. Destiny works in such a way because of the levels of creation, what we feel in the physical world is destined based on the law of probability. That if I go this way, I know I will reach there. If I don't reach there, it's against the law of probability. If somebody comes and gives a divine intervention to me, a holy man comes, he says, I'll stop you from going there. And he pushes me somewhere else. Wow, my destiny has changed. Because divine intervention took place. It has changed, I was going there. I made my plan to go there, and somebody changed it. Then we go to the next higher level and we find what is our destiny? It was, somebody will come and change, we will go there. Even the divine intervention was predetermined. But it was a divine intervention here. But it was not known to be an intervention when you went to the next place. Then some higher being comes up and makes an intervention there. And we go to the next higher level, even that was predestined. The whole programming is done for everything that is happening in one package, including the way we will get divine intervention, including our timing of going to true home. Everything is pre-packaged and the way we will think about our seeking, the way we will proceed, is all pre-packaged, but we don't know it. Therefore, our thoughts come as if we are making decisions right now. Well, very good. If you feel decisions are coming right now, make the best you can. Make the very best you can, that will be your destiny. So, it's a wonderful way to look at it, that you do the best decision. You have free will, you feel you have free will, use it the best you can can, you'll find that you are pre-programmed to the best you can. So, it's a, it's a good advice not to worry about my destiny was this, but I don't like it, I should have been like that. Mm -hmm. What is, is your destiny? What ought to be is the comment by your mind. And therefore, the comments on the mind don't change destinies. So, remember this and cheerfully accept and have patience for everything to happen. Thank you very much.